Good morning. Good morning, church. So good to see you this morning. And what a lovely morning. I love this kind of morning. Cold, crispy cold. Yeah? No? Yeah, yeah. I, this, is, this is my kind of weather. Let's all stand. <laughs> They'll be too comfortable. <laughs> Well, welcome to church. Welcome to, I um, just want to welcome our live stream this morning, wherever you're watching us. Hello and good morning, and uh, we can have a great time this morning. Okay, I'd like to read this. This is so uncharacter, uncharacter for a worship, but I just want to, because it stirred me. No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the, at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, and Mary sounds like our time. Isn't it? Yeah. It's happening in your time, and it's really happening in my time. We're, in the, we're living in the same world, aren't we? So they are drinking, they are eating, they're going to cafes and marrying, marrying out and marrying out here, giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the, the ark. And they knew nothing, and they knew nothing about what would happen until... Until Faith City Church, there is an until in our time. Until the flood came and took them all away. This is not just talking about the world out there. It's talking about the church as well. Are you prepared? Are you ready for the unexpected coming of the Lord? Are we it's a question I have to ask myself. Am I ready? Am I ready for this until, until the flood came and took them all away? Am I, am I prepared? Am I ready for this day, this unexpected day of the coming of the Lord? The thing is that I love this portion of scriptures that said, only the Father that knows. Faith City Church, only the Father that knows. And if the, only the Father that knows, that means that we, we as a church, we as Christians, we as children, as sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father, we must draw near to the Father. We must yearn for His presence. We must yearn for His fellowship. We must yearn for His presence to be in the presence 24-7 in all our lives. As the, um, the psalmist was saying, draw near. And, and, you know, that the psalmist cried out and said, my heart and my flesh um, will cry out for the living God. Are we crying out for the living God daily? It's a challenge, isn't it? Worship and praising God will draw us out, draw us to the Heavenly Father will draw us into His presence as we come to Him in praise and worship all our lives, not just in faith when we come together. Oh, and when we come together and worship Him, it's so powerful. But it started from home. You didn't wait till you get here. You started from home. When, you come, when you're coming in, you have post, uh, posture yourself that we will come and worship Him, that we will come and hear, incline our ears what our Father is saying. That is how we prepare ourselves for this unexpected day that the Son of Man is coming. Are we prepared? Let's prepare ourselves. Let's now encage our hearts in worship, in praising God, in thanking God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, Heavenly Father, this morning we come. Thank you for your word, Lord God. 
that, Lord God, that encourage, that wake us up, Lord God, that, Lord, that we will not be sleepers, Lord God, that will sleep during all these things that happen, Lord God. And, Lord, we pray that we will not be caught by unprepared, unready, Lord God, Lord, to the unexpected day that the Son of Man, our Lord Jesus Christ, but, Lord, that we will be wise people, that we prepare daily, Lord God, and in praise and worship we come to worship worship you this morning, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will come, Lord God, and as we worship you and, and praise you, Lord God, and thank you, Lord God, for this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We commit this service to you in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now let's worship him. Hallelujah. shall come when he shall come 
with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, just in His righteousness alone. For this. Stronger, you are stronger. Sin is broken. 
recipients of your love and your grace, your strength. Thank you again that we can gather to worship you today. Thank you that you're mighty in the midst of us, Lord God. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, that you're our Savior. Thank you for giving your life for us on the cross, purchasing our redemption, Lord God. Thank you that we are a people of hope because of what you've done thank you lord that christ in us is the hope of glory pray your blessing upon your people today as we gather here your blessing upon your people as they gather in prayer houses across this city and across this country lord god that your name will be glorified from one end of new zealand to the other we bless you today we thank you jesus you're a great god hallelujah and everyone say, Amen. 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 Find somebody and uh, strangle them with a hug.
Fantastic. You can find your seat again. I do want to remind you that uh, following the service this morning, there will be a cup of tea or coffee, some morning tea out in the lounge that's through the back doors there to the left. So if there's someone you didn't get to catch up with, please do grab them following the service and take them through for a cuppa. Hallelujah. Carry on. Uh, hello. <laughs> just clearing my throat. Everything's okay. It's fine. Right. We're just going to take up the offering. So let's prepare our hearts to give this morning. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Loving God, we thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for our fellowship together. Lord, we thank you that you are here among us and you are ministering to each of our hearts. And what a blessing it is to be together this morning in your name. Lord, as we give this morning, Lord God, we do it as an act of worship. We do it as an act of adoration. Lord, we love you. And we want to see your kingdom extended. We want to see others come to the knowledge of Christ just as we have. So Lord, bless the gift and the giver that this offering will go to the extension of your kingdom in this city, this nation, and of course the world. We pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Just as the bags are being passed around, I have a couple of notices. So hopefully you picked up your weekly bulletin as you came through the doors this morning. I also want to welcome everyone who's watching via live stream. Good morning or afternoon or evening or whatever it is, wherever you are. Just pray that you're blessed by your time with us this morning and you are blessed by the worship. Uh, you can find our bulletin through the church website, which is www.fcc.net.nz. But just a few things we want to highlight, so if you've got that there, you can uh, whip that out now. Uh, we mentioned last week that we have our AGM coming up. We now have a date for that. Uh, the AGM will be on the, where is it? Is it even on there? Yeah, it is. It is. It's, if you get out to church membership, it says the AGM is coming up on Sunday, the 14th of August. Okay, so there it is. Sunday, the 14th of August is when our AGM will be. Uh, so if you're unsure about your church membership, because last year we updated to a digital system, and maybe you've been a member for many years and you're unsure if uh, that record has been kept, uh, please do go and uh, fill out a new registration uh, membership form. Sorry. There are some physical ones at the office, but... If you have a digital device, you can head to our church website. At the very top of the website, there is a button there that says Membership Update. And you can simply click on that and do that. Nice and easy, easy peasy, done, bang, wham, lovely. Okay, so um, no excuses, good, fantastic, wonderful. Pastor Fear has a notice. Why don't we give Pastor Fear a hand? Well, ladies, we're finally going to have a women's breakfast. <laughs> And uh, we call it, uh, the theme is the Sisterhood in Faith. So in your faith in God and Sisterhood in Faith City Church. And, uh, um, and we are finally connected, reconnected at last. So it's 17 um, the ticket is $17, and it will be on the 6th of August. So, and the other thing too, it will be at Bula, uh, Bure as well at nine o'clock. So please, the, the tickets are ready that you can uh, uh, buy a ticket. The, the, the sooner, the better. First come, first service, okay? I just said $17 <laughs> per head. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so uh, encourage uh, men, encourage your ladies to come to the... Oh, and by the way, we have a, 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 a powerful... Um, guest speaker that will speak um, that morning. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Fear. Wonderful. So, men, that is your morning to babysit and to uh, do the dishes and to vacuum the house. Okay? So, <laughs> wonderful. So good. So good. Uh, finally, I do want to make you aware of our uh, movie that's coming up, the uh, church movie at the end of the month on uh, the last Sunday of the month in the evening here at 6.15 p.m. We'd love for you to come. We'll have some popcorn. Okay? And um, it'll be a good evening. We're going to watch Woodlawn. If you've never heard of Woodlawn, we'll show you the trailer next Sunday. So uh, come along, and it'll be a great time. It stars uh, Sean Austin, who was in Lord of the Rings, as uh, one, one of the Hobbits. So there you go. There's no Hobbits in this movie, but, you know, there's a little bit of association for you. That's all I have this morning. Why don't we uh, welcome our pastor. Good morning. The AGM is on the 14th. The ATM is down the road. <laughs> no, he didn't say ATM, I just just having you on. Yeah, praise the Lord. 
You okay? Yeah. We have a baby to dedicate. Yeah. Hallelujah. So if you bring him up here, that will be amazing. Who else came to the dedication? Well, you can come. You can come up and stand up here with us. Uh, be lovely. And I have my family in England watching online. Oh, welcome to the dedication of John, Joseph, John, Ivan. Is Ivan before John? Yeah, Ivan's before John. It's fine. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. Um, I've got, also got Marlene. All right. Let, let me have. Yep. Hey. I've just got me a new grandson. <laughs> He's got the best looking papa on this side of the return of the law. I know that uh, we are the black and white minstrels, but uh, <laughs> 10 speed and brown shoes. What a wonderful gift. What a wonderful gift. The Bible says the fruit of the womb is the reward of the Lord. God has rewarded us, giving this young woman a lovely child, giving this church a child that we can pray for. Joseph, God shall add. May God add to the life of this young man and the life of his family, his mom, everything that is needed. Ivan John Wayman, or John Ivan, it doesn't matter. Ivan and John are exactly the same name. In fact, Ivan means God is gracious, and John means God is gracious. It's exactly the same. One just came from England, and the other one came from the Bible, that's all. <laughs> I mean, uh, came from Russia. <laughs> but uh, what a good looking, how did you manage this? <laughs> you're, you're, you're a very clever girl, aren't you? What a lovely gift. Hallelujah. Do, do you want to have a look, uh, Hohepa? Uh, he, can't, he can't touch him. It's my grandbaby. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, you can just see and don't okay. touch. Hey, look at his bow tie. It's uh, fantastic. Got good color. If we put him in the sun, he'll look exactly like his papa if he goes in the sun. <laughs> but he got a good color. And uh, just lovely. Hey. You can look forward to having another one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sarah, may the Lord bless you. And all those that stand with you and surround you with their love. It's lovely that uh, this fellow can be. What do you think? Great grandma. Yeah. I have, <laughs> great grandma. I have seen him. Yep. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you're just going to pray for him and ask God's blessing upon him. And uh, all these dear ones will be praying for him in, as he grows. That, uh, God will bless him and set him apart for the purposes of heaven. Father, we thank you. If there are no emergencies in heaven. There are no mistakes in heaven. We thank you for the gift, Lord God, of Joseph. You've added to Sarah's life and to our lives. Lord, we bring him before you and lift him before you, Lord God, that your hand will rest upon this young man, Lord God, even as Joseph of old who found his destiny, Lord God, in you. And Lord, we bless him today and pray, dear God, that your favor will bless him and rest upon him, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for your strength. We pray for strength of body, soul, and spirit. We pray, dear God, that he'll have a good appetite like his papa. We bless him today in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want him back? Oh, you do? <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. 
This is for you. Oh, and he, all right. Hey, bless you, young man. Huh? Hey, all right. Give them a hand. Roger, good to see you. Bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, Ruth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to change my message. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I hope you don't mind. We shared uh, in the second service last week. Oh, this is the first service. We had a, we're talking about the anointing in the first service. But we shared in the second service regarding relationships that you build that will carry you to your destiny. Some of those relationships are already given by God. Like parental and children, the parental relationship between fathers and children, and other relationships like marriage. That's that when if you're married, that relationship is now also a covenant relationship that will carry you through to the destiny God has for you. Now, if you have a look at Psalm 25, we'll start from there. Just in case you think I'm just making things up. <laughs> Psalm 25. One of my favorite Psalms. Hallelujah. And verse um, 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord is with those that fear him, and he will show them the secret. He will show the secret, but he will show the secret in the covenant. And covenant is a relationship like marriage. You are covenanted to one another, and that relationship, if it's built on properly, and you understand the purpose, we said last week, if you don't know the purpose of a husband, don't get married. Yeah. Nothing, is, nothing comes without a purpose. But when you understand that and you get married and you build that covenant relationship, that relationship will lead you to your destiny. Some relationship will destroy your destiny. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals, bad company. So sometimes there are relationships that you need to leave alone, but there are covenant relationships that will enhance your growth and will propel you to destiny. Hallelujah. You get the, the relationship between uh, Elijah and Elisha, two of the most powerful men in history, Outside of Jesus Christ, Elijah and Elisha were the most powerful human beings in the realm of the supernatural and the miraculous. But the relationship led to destiny. Elijah is still in heaven, has to come back to earth. And Elisha lived after him and performed twice as many miracles before he died. And some of those relationships you need to nurture, and when you find them, don't let go. And we shared last week with the second service that Lot and Abraham, Lot did not know that the reason he was blessed in the relationship was because of the old fella. God had a relationship and a covenant with Abraham 
and everyone connected with Abraham will be blessed by that covenant. I will bless you, and through you, I'll bless every nation, every hapu, every iwi. Because you're connected to a covenant man that is covenanted to God. And Lot did not know that. And when the herdsmen of Lot and Abraham began to quarrel, Lot should have instructed his herdsmen, hey, listen, don't do that. But he didn't. And uh, they came to a place where Abraham said to Lot, separate from me. And uh, Abraham said something quite unique. He said, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. But you choose. Now, Lot again should have given the honor to the old guy. Honor your father and mother and it shall be well. And it'll be okay. You'll live long in the, in the land that God gives to you. It doesn't matter what kind of land. If that's what God gives you, you'll live long. Because it doesn't matter if you live in a desert. The Bible says, I'll prosper where my word is sent. And God may send his word to a storm. And he'll prosper the storm. He may send it to a desert. It'll prosper the desert. And Lot should have said to the old man, you are the senior. You're my elder. You choose first. But Lot decided to choose. And he chose uh, the, the luscious plains of the Jordan. He did not know that the luscious plains were actually around the Dead Sea. He did not know that it was Sodom and Gomorrah. Many times we cut relationship that we should never cut. And we nurture relationship that we should never have. Are you alright? Don't go to sleep on me. Hallelujah. And you find, you find this, these two guys where Elijah's going to go to heaven. The, guys, the guy wanted to die. He's still alive. You know, he <laughs> ran away from uh, Mount Carmel and said to the Lord, kill me. <laughs> and he's still alive. Don't you want to die? You'll only die if God allows you to die. All right? Okay. God's in control. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the, the, the funny thing, in the last test of the relationship where Elijah said, you stay here, I'm going on. He said, if you're going, I'm coming. He wasn't disobedient. He was trying to possess something in the spirit and the covenant relationships that lead you to destiny are spiritually bound, not just physical. And when he, they left, and they left Gilgal, and they came to Bethel, and they came to Jericho, and they came to the Jordan, and they cut the Jordan in half. And got to the other side, and the old guy looked at the young man, and he said, what do you want? I want your spirit. I know you've got a car in Kilgal and you've got a house in Bethel. I know that uh, you've got a, a perfume factory in Jericho. I know all those things. All those are immaterial. They are material things, but they are immaterial to the supernatural. I want what you've got. What makes Elijah Elijah? What makes you you? I want that. And I want two of it. And when Elijah went to heaven, the little fella began to perform miracles and he performed double of all the things his father did except one. The raising of the dead. Are you okay? So when he died, he only raised one person from the dead. But when he died, they were coming to bury a body and soldiers turned up and the, 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 the ball bearers threw the body into the the sepulcher of the guy that died having raised only one person. And even when he was dead, he raised, he raised the guy from the dead when he was dead. Covenant 
relationships that will propel you to destiny. Hallelujah. And Lot lost the plot. In fact, the old guy had to go and, and uh, intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, if there are 10 in the city, the last request began from about 50, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. He said, if there are 10 in Wanganui, would you spare the city for 10? God said, I will. And then he left. I'm convinced if he said, if there's one, would you spare the city? I'm convinced God will have said, if there's only one, I will. But he decided to stop at 10. And fire came down. Lot got uh, saved. His wife turned around and turned into a pillar of uh, margarine, I mean salt. And Lot ended up in a cave with two of his daughters and incest was the result. And uh, one of the boys that came out of that ancestral relationship was Moab. Moab was not a country. It became a country, but that's the name of a boy. Where Ruth came from. And you know the story of Ruth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the covenant relationship that she made with uh, Naomi and said, don't you tell me to go back to Moab. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you live, I'll live. Where you die, I'll die. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. <laughs> and uh, you don't know you've got a Simon family, do you? Well, God, you've got a Simon brother. And he got me for good. But that's a covenant relationship that produced the Messiah. And out of that, see, the, the, the destiny of a heathen uh, idol worshiper that gave that up to follow her mother-in-law to the land of uh, the house of bread, that relationship, amazing. When you nurture relationships like that, don't throw it away. Because your destiny is in it. Are you okay? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say amen. amen. Is this all right? Yes. Hallelujah. Have a look at um, Genesis uh, 21. I'm just talking now about one particular relationship. We'll talk about the others in the Sundays to come. Talking about uh, parental, generational, covenant relationships that will bring blessing and destiny into your life. I, I wish uh, young people will get this. Many young people get it, but they get it far too late. So just like you and me. <laughs> Remember that? All right. When your dad told you, to, and you, said, oh, you, you thought your father was an extension of the Antichrist, and then you grew up and your father died, and you realized my father was very wise. So we don't blame the kids. It's, you know, like we said one time, if I was God and I'm not, I would have made people back to front. Because now you're old and you're very, very wise, but your muscles have gone. You can't run as fast as you 
you can't even hear properly. It's not because you've got a hearing problem. It's because the muscle has is, is grown old. Do you run as fast as you used to? No. Do you see as good as you used to? No. Why? Because you're growing old. But now you're wiser. But you've got no strength. And when you're young, you're so strong and you're very stupid. No wonder the, the Prime Minister of, New, of Britain said, youth is wasted on the young. And he wanted to slap them in the face. He said, I've been there. And I wish they will know that because when you, when you begin this honoring thing from a young age, you're going to see the glory of God all your life. Talk to Joseph. Good relationship. We'll talk about him as we go along. So here is verse up. Verse 8, so the child grew, talking about Isaac, and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. How many families will make a feast today when they wean their child? <laughs> you try and wean a kid, you know, you, you know they cry. <laughs> you don't want to make a feast because they, hello, never mind. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, scoffing. Therefore she said to Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not, have, shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. And you know that story. So Abraham cast out the bondwoman with her son, which was grievous to Abraham, because the man was a father, and he actually believed that Ishmael was the promised son. And he said to God, Ishmael will walk before you. And God said, no. But I want you to see something of the goodness of God. And uh, God said to Abraham, verse 12, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. Why? Because you're covenanted to me. Even though that boy is not the promised son, I'm God, I promise you I will bless him. Because he is connected to you. So the, the, the woman and the son were sent away. And Abraham rose early in the morning, took bread and a skin of water. And putting it on her shoulder, gave it uh, and gave it and uh, gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba, and the water in the skin ran out, and uh, she put the boy under a little pohutukawa tree. It's a different tree in the Bible, but I'm just trying to, all right? And then she went and sat on the, uh, further away looking, and she began to cry because there was nothing. But God has already promised, I'll bless the boy because... He's connected to your dad, connected to Abraham. And the Bible's very clear. God heard the voice of the lad. The woman was crying, the boy was crying, but God did not hear the voice of the woman. God heard the voice of the boy and spoke to the woman, and the boy lived. And this is, this is what it says here. It's amazing. Verse 19, And God opened her eyes, she saw the well of water, and she went and filled the skin of water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad. God was with the lad. Are you okay? Verse 22, I want you to see this. Just, uh, just as, uh, it's part of the message, but it's... And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and, and Phico, the commander of his army, spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you. Well, God was with the lad. 
because God was with the, the dad. Hallelujah. But the blessing, he was blessed because he was connected to Abraham. Are you all right? You can talk to me, otherwise I'm just be talking to myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me find my reference. And we'll carry on. We'll look at uh, Genesis 25. I've got three more minutes, so I'll Fine. Hurry up, okay? Now, Abraham is going to bless Isaac. Now, the, the generational blessing of covenant relationships. Abraham again took a wife. Her name was Keturah. And she bore him Simran, Jokshan, Medan, Median. Ishbak and Shua. Zimram, Jokshan, Medan, Median, Ishbak and Shua. Six boys. So all together, Abraham has eight sons. But this is what it says. And verse 5, And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac, but Abraham gave gifts to the sons of the concubines which Abraham had. And while he was still living, he sent them eastward away from Isaac, his son, to the country of the east. So he blessed the other six boys. Ishmael is blessed because of his connection with his father. The other boys wouldn't be blessed too if they understood it. But he gave Isaac all that he had. Now, he you, you said, if he given the other boys gifts like uh, cars and uh, uh, laptops and cell phones and cash, what, why does he say that he gave all to Isaac? So does the other boys think that they gave them does not count? They all count. But what he gave to the other boys was physical. What he gave to Isaac was what made Abraham, Abraham. He gave him his, the same way Elijah and Elisha, he gave him everything that he had. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual thing. Now you realize if it's a spiritual thing, it doesn't have to be your natural father. That's why adopted kids are blessed, not just by their parents, but by God. God sets the solitary in family. He's father to the fatherless and defender of widows. But many times the adopted don't know that. But when the adopted don't do that, <laughs> hello? He gave Isaac who he was. Are you all right? Now, when Isaac, I, I won't refer to the Bible, but I'll just tell you, because you know. When Isaac was old, he said to his firstborn, go fetch me some meat, the stuff that I really like from the game park of Johannesburg. <laughs> and cook it, and then bring it to me. And uh, his wife, what's his wife's name? Rebecca. Rebecca heard it, and Rebecca favored the little boy, Jacob. And he said to Jacob, just go out the back, you know, I'll, <laughs> just there. I mean, if I was Esau, I wouldn't even go hunting, just go out the back. 
But the boy went out, got the, and Rebecca prepared the meal, and the boy said, what if he finds out that I'm Jacob? He said, wear your brother's clothes. And then he put the skins on the bare parts of the hands that didn't, were not covered by the clothes. And when he came in, he said, I'm your son Esau. He lied. I'm your son Esau, I brought this food for you so you can bless me. And uh, the old man said, the voice is different. Come closer. So when he felt him, it was Esau, and he blessed him. Why was Jacob so concerned about that? Because Jacob knew his older brother was careless. He's already sold his firstborn blessing for a bowl of noodle soup. And many times we sell the blessing of God for a bowl of noodle soup. And God blessed uh, uh, Jacob. And he said, uh, let me find it. Some of you find the, the reference for the thing. And so I won't have to belabor the thing too long. And blessed him and he said, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that God has blessed. May the dew of heaven be upon you and may, may the earth yield its, its growth to you. 27? Hallelujah. Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren and let your mother's son bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curses you and bless be those who bless you. And as he was just walking out, Esau came in and his father quivered. Why? Because he's already imparted his spirit to somebody else. And what he said is very, very vital. He said, I've already given my blessing to another, and indeed he shall be blessed. Go and have a cup of tea because my time is up. We'll carry on next week. <laughs>